What if we went back in time? And said something to our past selves. Hang, Hang on, on for, for the loop. loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Jamie, what word would you use to describe yourself in middle school? Uh, silly. Ooh, okay, let's see. Silliness. Also, foolishness. Synonyms, absurdity, balminess, craziness, daftness, fatuity, Ooh, I like folly, that one. folly, insanity, lunacy, madness, simplicity, wackedness, witlessness, and zaniness. Ooh, I like zaniness. Okay. okay, what word would you use to describe yourself? Hmm, in middle school. Yeah, in middle school. Uh, cautious. Ooh. Very cautious. I was trying to navigate those social circles so I can fit it. Okay, cautionary. See, careful. Synonyms. You were alert, or still are. Cautious, considerate, gingerly, guarded, heedful, safe, weary, wary, weary. weary. Could've, could've swore that was spelled differently. <laughs> I think that it's fascinating to hear the words that people use to describe themselves. And they may or may not be the same words that you would use. If you could go back in time and share these words with younger Ricky, would he agree? There's only one way to find out. <gasps> Did you finally figure out time travel? No, but close. And we're gonna find out right after this. If you're like me, you've probably had a moment where maybe you're just staring off into space. And maybe you have a bowl of pasta with you, who knows? And then you're just twirling your pasta, just thinking and thinking, and suddenly it hits you. Who am I? That can be a really hard question to answer. Sometimes it's hard to tell the real you from all of the messages about who you're supposed to be. Are you this? Are you that? Who are you supposed to be? And one of the hardest questions to ask is, where do you find truth when you're not even really sure who you are? Well, where can you always find truth? The Bible. Let's look at what Paul wrote in Romans 12 too. Paul says, don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. In this passage, we find out that Paul isn't just talking to the Romans, he's also talking to us or anyone who follows Jesus. He's warning the Romans that Rome is not going to tell them who they are. Paul is reminding all of us that God can transform our minds and reveal how we can be more like him. Another big question to ask is, why do you think that people focus more on things that they don't like about themselves rather than what God says about them? Well, a lot of the big influences in our life are probably social media, our peers, even our family. And sometimes those things can just bring us down and we can lose sight of what God truly says about us. As followers of Jesus, we believe that the Bible holds truth that sets us free. It transforms our minds and shows us what full life looks like from start to finish. In the very beginning of the Bible, we learn that God created us in his own image. God knows the real you and that's who you are. So when you ask yourself, who am I? You can answer with, I am made in the image of God. And that's the truth. So I haven't figured out how to time travel, but I have found a way to recreate the past. So we are going to recreate photos from our past today. Yay, so that's why Robbie's here. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell the Loopsters what you do. Well, I'm a photographer and photography has let me take pictures all around the world, including of famous people, just like both of you, oh. as well as everything in between <laughs> from animals, yearbook photography, dance photography, all sorts of stuff. I, I really enjoy getting to photograph just people. That's awesome. So where is the coolest place that you've ever taken a photo? I would have to say my mom actually took me to Rome when I was 11 and gave me her camera and I got to go around the Colosseum and take pictures while rollerblading. So, That's, oh my gosh. It was quite fun. Do you have a favorite photo that you've taken? Yeah, my favorite photo is actually of my previous pastor and he was baptizing someone and I had half the photo in the water and half the photo out of the water and I love that moment. That's awesome. How did you capture that? I used a fish tank. I put the fish tank into the water and that way you could see both the above and below. That's so cool, yeah. so creative. What's your coolest <laughs> animal that you've ever photographed? Probably my poodle. I love my oh. standard poodle. That's so cool, I can't wait to see a photo of him. What's his name? Winter. Very cool. Okay, let's see if we can turn back the hands of time and recreate photos from our past. Here we are, welcome to the studio, Ricky. Thanks what, for having me. Yeah, what photo do you want to recreate? This one. From that time I played baseball. 
I love it. Were you a professional baseball player? No, I was terrible. I'm pretty sure this was the <laughs> one and only year. So it looks like we have at least one light over here. Okay. And then actually we can see in your eyes that there's two lights in there. So here we have set up a light above you, a light over here behind you to kind of recreate the two different lights. Wanna give it a shot? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Take your shoulders all the way that way. Yep, awesome. All right, let's take a test shot. Here we go. One, two. Oh my gosh, we almost got it. I'm just gonna move you a little bit down. Ready, one, two, and smile. Perfect, Ricky. All right, let's try this with Jamie. Okay, so we are going to recreate this photo. I'm super excited. It I think I was awesome. 10, maybe. And you still have the same clothes. I, I kept the outfit. I love it. We're gonna bring this in. Okay. That way you have something to put your elbows on. Awesome. And then <laughs> this is very bright. Grab this thing right here. Awesome. Just kind of darken that. So this thing is called a big old V flat. Okay. Yeah. So v flat. We'll just put that behind you. And that awesome. way we can create a black uh, space to make a little bit more of a moodier uh, situation. Can you do the po Oh, you can. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love it. What do you think your favorite thing was back then? During this photo, having somebody do my makeup was my favorite. Oh, I love it. Thanks. So you were probably feeling just fabulous right here. I did. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so let's feel fabulous okay. all over again. Okay. You already got dressed up. Give me a smile. Okay. One, two. Awesome. And then now let's go to the more of the serious 11-year-old okay. Jane. Oh, goodness. One, two. Good job, Jamie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. I'll take these and I'll do a little editing on the computer and then I'll meet you back at the desk. Woohoo! Can't wait. Who do you want to become? What type of person do you want to be? Why do you want to be that? I pray that you spend enough time in God's presence that you know the who that he wants you to be. And it's not a selfish why, but it's a spiritual why. And so based on who you wanna become, what habit do you need to start? And based on who you wanna become, what one habit do you need to stop? And then we're not gonna to try to be better, we're gonna to try to be, no, no, we're in training. We're, we're, in, we're in training. We're training our bodies for righteousness. We're training our minds to think on the Word of God. Because what we plant, we will reap. The way that we're living today will impact who you become, what you have, what kind of difference you can make, how you feel on the inside, how you impact people on the outside. So are we successful if we finally hit the goal five years from now? No, 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 no. We don't have to wait till then. We don't judge the success of the day by the harvest that we reap, but by the seeds we sow. We're sowing righteousness. We're sowing righteousness. We're so small, consistent, God honoring living added up over time equals a harvest of righteousness. Here we are, I got the photos pulled up on the laptop. So here's your original photo. Okay. And then here is your new one. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Incredible. Yeah, it turned out really wow. good. And I love that you're wearing WWJD bracelet I did in not, both photos. I did not realize that was in the original photo. That's so cool, are they both so green? Cool. They are. Oh my gosh. I it's love it. It's the same it. bracelet. I wish it was the same bracelet. <laughs> yeah, that would be impressive. Oh wow. All right, Jamie, you ready? Yes. Here's your original photo. Okay, okay. And now here's the new one. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, that's really cool. I actually really like the expression in my eyebrows in this one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I love it. Really good. good job. I'm so glad that you came on the show today and got to do this. Oh, it looks amazing. It. This has been so much fun. I mean, I look back at uh, a kid who was playing baseball and I had no business playing baseball, <laughs> uh, but I still did it. And I think I surprisingly am just like being really inspired by young me today. So even at this young age, I knew I wanted to be an actress, um, but I also knew how hard it would be um, to be an actress. And so I'm just really glad that like young me didn't give up on that. Um, yeah, because now I'm, you know, on The Loop Show, which yeah, is are. so cool. <laughs> Thank you. And you're famous. Yeah, well, I don't know about famous. I'm just really glad that young me stuck with her dreams. Yeah. Yeah, because I never could have imagined something like this. It's even better. So if you really could travel back in time, what would you tell this baseball playing Ricky? I would say you are stronger than you can imagine um, and you are more loved than you know. Mm. It's wonderful. Jamie, what about mm-hmm. you as uh, as you look at your old self as little budding actress? <laughs> yes. Well, in addition to acting, I also really liked dancing. And dancing is actually something that I quit at a very young age because some of the other girls in the class made fun of me. I wish that I could go back and tell my younger self, don't quit dance because yeah, I just loved it. And I and I let that discourage me from continuing to do it, so. We look back at photos and sometimes I think we can look at ourselves and see ourselves in a different light. And I think what's so beautiful about the gospel is that we get to be seen by how he sees us. And so it depends on the light you put on it, whether it's the thoughts on our in our mind or if it's the truth of the, the gospel speaking words into our heart. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for letting me be on the show. Uh, such a privilege. I watch the show myself oh, with my kids cool. and you guys are amazing. <laughs> so thank you for all that you do. Yeah. Thanks for letting me show a little bit of what I do in my world mm-hmm. and stepping in front of my camera. And especially thank you for your vulnerability as we walk through a little bit of your past and where you are now. Yeah, thank you. Thank You're you. an amazing photographer. We were lucky to have you on set with us. I'm back with my hack, baby! I have this discernment hack for finding truth. If you remember it, say it with me. Check, compare, cultivate. Check, compare, cultivate. Three little words to help us find God's truth. Those three words are my reminder for how to live out this verse from Paul in Romans. Let's see, here we go, Book of Romans, towards the end. He says, don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Check then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what he wants is right. Compare. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Cultivate. I wanna try it out with a very popular phrase that I've actually said before in my own life. All right, you ready for this? It's this phrase, you do you. Have you ever said that? You do you. Again, I don't think that this string of words is necessarily bad at its core. It's just three words, and one of them is used twice, you do you. Uh, But when we're looking for truth about who we are, does you do you help us find out? When you tell yourself that you're something good or something bad, does that make it true? Time to try the hack. Let's check, compare, cultivate. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is stop and check the source. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, uh, what is he talking about? He's talking about the Bible. Of course he's talking about the Bible because as followers of Jesus, we believe the Bible holds truth that sets us free. Let's start at the start of the story. We have this life-giving book. It's in the book of Genesis. You ready for this? It captures how we are created by God and made in his image. And then you keep turning through the pages and you read all these stories about how, how like God knows the truth about humans better than anyone or anything else. He created the people on these pages and he created you and me. He knows us. And then because all of this points to Jesus, we get to the story of Jesus and we study his life and read what he said. And here in the source, the life, sacrifice, and resurrection of Jesus shows you how much God sees you, the real you. Trace it from the start. The creator knows you and cares about you and wants the best for you. It's what this book is all about. All right, on the next step, slow down and compare God's truth to your choices. Uh, You do you. This idea that you can settle with what you think about yourself. That's on this hand. And on the other hand, God created you as his masterpiece. 
Compare it. When you tell yourself you're something other than what God says about you, that leads to believing lies that can trap you and leave you struggling with your worth and your purpose. When you tell yourself you're God's masterpiece, you live in freedom. Hold the lies up to the light. After testing and comparing, what sounds like truth? Okay, and then what? Go and cultivate! As we said, cultivate means developing and caring for something. What is the good fruit that will be cultivated when truth transforms what you know about yourself? It's things like love and joy and peace and kindness and self-control. Those are the byproducts when you're secure that God sets your worth. Instead of pretending to be something you're not, you choose to be who God created you to be. Check, compare, cultivate. Just because you believe something about yourself doesn't mean it's true. Are you following lies you fear instead of what is clear? God knows the real you. That's the truth. In some ways, we're the exact same people we were when we were younger. And a lot of things have changed. But God never changes. Yet we are so loved by God. We're created in His image. Don't fall for lies. Listen to the truth. God knows the real you. He always has and He always will. You want to help us sign off? I'd love to. All right, you want to count us down? Oh, here we go. Okay. Three, two, one. Enjoy the ride! Ooh, that was really good. <laughs> I think you matched pitch. All right, Robbie, what is one of your favorite episodes of The Loop Show? Well, one of my favorites? How am I going to pick? I know, it's hard. <laughs> I think I would say probably like uh, a few years ago, there's an Easter one where they're throwing eggs full of paint at each other. That was fun. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, you can check that one out, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>